Hi, I'm Mike, owner of the InGroove in Phoenix, Arizona. Today I want to do a video on misinformation. So lately I've been seeing a lot of information on YouTube, videos, reviews, shootouts, things on forums, and then somebody came into the store and we started talking about Music Matters and the Blue Note Classic series. And their hypothesis was that the Music Matters sounded better. And I'm like, well, you know, I haven't done any deep comparison, any shootouts back to back. I played them and they've sounded fantastic, but I've never compared them back to back with any of the Music Matters titles. And I thought to myself, why would the Music Matters be better? Let's think about it. They're both cut by Kevin Gray from the original Analog Master Tape. If anything, I would assume that the classic series titles would sound better. And the reason I say that is because Kevin Gray has done 100 plus Blue Note titles he's mastered so far, maybe more. You think about all the music, maybe closer to 200. You think about all of the 45 RPM Music Matter stuff, the Analog Productions titles, then he went back and did them at 33 RPM for Music Matters. Uh, he's done some things for other labels. You know, there was the uh, Grant Green title that was done. It was, uh, you know, that was cut by Kevin Gray. Then he started doing the classic series stuff, or 80th anniversary stuff. Then he started doing the classic series stuff. And I got to thinking, I'm like, well, so what you're telling me is he punted the ball for these particular titles? You know, for some reason, even though he's done hundreds of these things, he's got to be, you know, this has to be down to his science at this point. You're telling me he punted the 80th anniversary or the classic series stuff as opposed to the Music Matters? What's the logic in that? You know, Blue Note's owned by Universal. Universal is the largest music conglomerate in the world. They own you know, Blue Note, Impulse, catalogs far and deep. So you're telling me that Kevin Gray, what did he do? He punted this? He learned less information? He, you know, he purposely made it worse? I mean, they're both pressed and plated at RTI. The only difference is this is, you know, this is done by Music Matters, pressed and plated at RTI, and then, you know, this is, cut by him, plated at RTI, pressed at Optimal in Germany, which is a fantastic record plant. I mean, they've done killer stuff. So I, it just it didn't ring true with me. I just couldn't quite grasp it. I couldn't figure out why that would be. What's going on there? You know, I, the gentleman I was spoken, speaking to, I kind of said, you know, I, I doubt it. I, I, I don't know. I just don't believe it. So I went home last night, this morning, and I started listening to him. And, you know, it got to the point where, I mean, we're talking like these things are almost identical. There's minor, minor differences. And the biggest difference is I would say some of the 80th anniversary stuff is cut a little bit louder. Now, I'll tell you what I sh did a shootout on. I did it with Soul Station. I did it with Lee Morgan's The Sidewinder. I did it with Joe Henderson's page one. The other titles, I've had issues getting, keeping them in stock. You know, we had some pre-orders on the website. I got everybody's pre-order out the door long before I took a copy home. So there's a few titles I'm missing. But you know what? That's three solid titles that I was able to do a shootout on. And I would say the only thing that I would say as a whole is they're cut a smidge louder. Uh... I needed to, you know, to volume match the two records, I needed to bring the volume down on the classic series just a tad. But that doesn't change the sonic characteristics. I mean, I will tell you guys, these things are absolutely almost the same. I mean, they're about as close as two records could get. If I was doing a shootout, you know, where I went back and I was digging out every record and doing the pressing comparisons that I normally did do, I'd be beating my head against the ground trying to tell you guys a discernible difference between the two of these. These things are as absolutely close as possible. It even got to the point where I was switching back and forth and back and forth, and I lost track which version I was listening to. I quickly discovered that the most easily way to identify the two is the music matters. Let's see if we could see this here. Has one 
row of text on the top versus the classic series on the outer edge of the label has two lines of text. I mean, I discovered that only by happenstance, by trying to figure out a way to like easily identify which I was putting back and forth. I mean, these things are absolutely as close as you could possibly get. And for anybody to tell you that you should go out and spend $200 to $300 on a Music Matters title because it sounds better, I mean, this is just preposterous. I don't know where the hell people are, what the agenda here is, if there's a placebo effect going on. Now, like, look, let me pull these two out. Now, there's no doubt when you hold this in your hand, you know, this is a work of art. This cover, this stout and tip on jacket, I mean, this is a hearty cover, full gloss. They use the original session photography on it. This sounds absolutely, you know, this, excuse me, this looks absolutely fantastic. The record sounds absolutely fantastic. And then we look at the, you know, the 80th anniversary. So, you know, I really think there could be a huge placebo effect when you put this next to this. You know, if you were to just talk to the average person, if I was walking down the street and I went to somebody and said, hey, which one of these is better? They're going to pick this, right? I mean, this is the choice. But I would bet dollars to donuts if I took both of those records and I said, listen to these, which one sounds better? People, I think people would look at you in a confused manner. They couldn't quite, like, what do you mean? We're not listening to the same thing? I, it's just, I think it is absolutely preposterous to assume that these Music Matters titles are better. I refuse to believe that Kevin Gray, after doing this for as long as he has, years after that these came out, he is not doing as good, if not better, or of a job. With practice comes experience with experience comes you know you become better at something to assume he's become worse it's just absolute preposterous i just these 80th anniversary editions or and classic series they're both the same you know the classic is the warhorse titles the 80th was some i won't say lesser titles but less popular titles let's put it that way but these are unbelievably good value and unless you have Every record in your collection that you possibly could need, and you are fine-tuning your collection, why would you buy this? I mean, I buy it because, you know, I'm fanatical, and I have to make a video and say, like, like here's what's up. And I bought these for $35 when they were new. You know, the store was a Music Matters dealer until they pulled it from everybody. But at, a, at the time, I was, you know, telling everybody that these are unbelievable. You should own these. They're fantastic because... What you were comparing them with at the time was a 75th anniversary or a slew of, you know, the DMMs from the 80s were pretty easy to get. There was nothing like this at the time. These were absolutely fantastic. And I preached, I've done videos on it. I told everybody that these are fantastic. But we're living in an age that, you know, this is, this is for all intents and purposes, we're essentially just popping these discs quality-wise, sonically into these cheap generic covers. I'll tell you this too, unlike a lot of the reissues that have come before this, where they've just scanned the jacket, these 80th anniversaries and classic series, they didn't just scan the jacket. They went, you know, this is the original, you can just tell, it's not blurry. This is the original, more than likely the file used to create this, the image used to create these two are identical. The only difference is the, you know, the 80th and classic series doesn't have the heavy duty stout and tip on treatment. Now, I will say that there's some quality control issues with the new classic series. No fill, scratches, and oddly enough, <laughs> explain to me how this happens, but when I opened my copy of Hank Mobley, it came in a polyline sleeve. My Joe Henderson came in a paper sleeve. This had all kinds of inaudible light surface scuffs on the record in the poly sleeve. You know, this one, you can see it has the polyline sleeve. All kinds of audibles, inaudible, couldn't hear it, would never be able to tell that they were on there. Surface scuffs. My Joe Henderson, which came in a cheap paper sleeve, was pristine and immaculate. You know, I don't think this is, you know, they're not purposely sabotaging anything. Optimal's not doing it. Obviously, 
you know, Blue Note is not doing it. Blue Note paid for a product. They want it to be the best as possible. You know, it's not like they went, you know, and resurrected Rainbow to have these things press. Optimal is a premium plant. I think what we're dealing with now is the fact that vinyl production is at its absolute capacity. We're having issues, guys. I'm having issues with everything. It's not just these. This becomes a little bit more noticeable because I could tell you in the audiophile sphere, sphere, there's no more sellable titles than these classic series. You know, when I do a pre note, a pre order for a one step or a classic series or a tone poet, these sell outsell anything else. I mean, I sell so many more of these 80th anniversary and classic series titles than I do any other audiophile record. Short of, you know, maybe if I had the Miles Davis kind of blue mobile fidelity and infinite supply, I'd probably sell more of those. But these sell like gangbusters. So there's a lot more out there. There's a lot more possibility for, you know, for problems. There's more people. It's in more people's hands. If seven times the amount of people have this record versus another record, you're going to hear about seven times more problems. I'm having problems with everything, guys. There's problems with QRP. There's problems with RTI. I mean, there's just, when it comes to vinyl, you're dealing with a mostly handmade product. There's just issues. You guys have to deal with that. And maybe there's a, you know, when it comes to the audio file labels, uh, pressing plants, the Palace, Optimal, QRP, and uh, RTI, maybe there's a little bit more issues than there was five years ago. But, you know, it's just something we're going to, you know, I don't think that is anything more than a, the circumstance we're currently in to where vinyl in general cannot be made fast enough. Look at what's going on. Look at how many audio file titles that I currently have, for instance, from Mobile Fidelity in stock. I have none. I do not have one Mobile Fidelity record in stock. It's not because I can't, it's because there is none. There is none anywhere. There's none on MoFi's website, there's none on my website, there's just none available. Everything is sold out. And that's the case across the board with almost all of these audio file labels. They cannot keep stuff in stock. Even Analog Productions, who makes their own records, is having a very, very difficult time keeping things around. So we're seeing more quality control issues. And I think that's just goes hand in hand with the ability to try to keep his things in stock. But I will say that do not do not believe trust me on this guys don't let people convince you into spending $250 on something like this as opposed to $25 on this it is a fool's errand if you have plenty of cash this is an overall better product because it's a better presentation it was made at a time when there was fewer quality control issues and this is the full package. And now I'm to keep in mind, guys, I'm not, we're not looking at SRX. The VR900 that SRX vinyl is made on is the best vinyl compound I've ever heard. It's unbelievably quiet. It's not fair to compare that to something like this. But let's compare the standard 180 gram versus, you know, an equivalent 180 gram product. Unless you have Buku Bucks in limited space. Why would you buy this? You'd buy the better product overall, right? Unless you are, you know, this is your absolute favorite album. You know, Soul Station is it for you. I can see you spending the money on this. But I think most people are in the beginning stages of collecting vinyl. They don't have many items in their collection. They're not like me. They don't have four rooms full of records. When you get to the point like me where you have rooms full of records, you're really looking for stuff to buy. Let's like, you know, let's try something new. Let's buy something I already have seven copies of. But if you're not that, if you're starting off a collection, you would be foolish to waste money on a Music Matters title. Don't get me wrong, they revolutionized how Blue Note titles were presented. Nobody did this beforehand. I mean, you know, you had the classic series stuff that Bernie Grunman cut where they replicate it as close to possible, the original. But, you know, they just sonically didn't sound as good as these. There was just, they weren't there. And I think that's pretty common knowledge. And you can assume that that's probably the case by the secondary prices on a lot of those titles. You know, where a Music Matters title might be two to $300, a lot of those classic 
200 gram replica records are 80, 90 bucks. And there's a reason for that. These are universally accepted as amazing sounding, but these should be too. I mean, you will, I, I'm telling you guys, you will bat your head up against the wall trying to tell me the son, sonic differences between the two of these, but you gotta volume match it. The very first thing I noticed, Lee Morgan was where I started. You know, when you start turning your volume up quite a bit louder, what's the first thing I typically notice, and my, you might notice as well, horns come through a lot brighter. You know, there's kind of a, you know, in all the systems I've owned, you know, the beginning part of that dial, things are a little bit more mellow. When you start cranking and you start pushing the system, whether it's my old Macintosh system, whether it's the VTLs and Wilson system, when you start cranking it a little bit more, the first thing I typically notice is how much more the horns scream out at you. And I think that's what's going on here. I think we just have a little volume. I think it was cut just a smidge higher, hotter. When I turn that volume down, now for me, the perfect volume match, and I got a microphone out, we did a decibel reading. I think the perfect match was about three digits. You know, on my stereo, I went from 49 to 46, and that was about as close to volume matching as I could. But there's a big difference between those three digits. You know, 49 to 46 on my system made a diff big difference. Brought down the Classic Series to 46, I thought it was a perfect volume match on my system. It was nice, and it was a more smooth, you know, it was a more smooth sound. When I bumped up the Music Matters, left the Classic alone. Now, I mean, these things were like apples and apples, guys. We were really comparing, like, the same thing. I mean, these things are so, so... I implore you guys, do some volume matching. Get these things as close as possible. Invite your friends over and ask them to tell you the difference. Seriously. Tell me the difference, guys. Which one of these sounds better? Try to do some blind testing on your own. I think you're gonna come away pretty surprised at what you got. Now, I just, unfortunately, and I can't say this enough, there is an overwhelming desire for people to try to justify their purchases. I spent $250 on this record, it sounds the best. I spent $1,000, $1,500 on a UHQR Dark Side of the Moon, it sounds the best. I spent $600 on, you know, whatever, a Nirvana Nevermind, MFSL record, it sounds the best. But that's just not how it works. Sometimes the much, much cheaper, more plentiful available item is the winner. And that's just the way it works. I don't personally give two shits what a record costs me. I've got so many records at this point, I'm finding records that I didn't even know I had that are worth buku bucks. You guys have to trust me when I tell you it doesn't matter to me and it really shouldn't matter to you. You really got to try to take all that out. The emotional attachment that you have with a record because you paid a lot or it looks better. You got to try your hardest. And I know it's hard and it's hard for a lot of people online. You got to take all that out of the equation because it don't matter. What matters is what you're listening to. And please listen to the two side by side. But just once again, please explain to me. I know I've mentioned this already, but please explain to me why Kevin Gray punted the Classic Series, why he purposely made it better. It, can you think of any rational explanation why you would do that? Because I could think of a million reasons you wouldn't. You know, you're, you're an artist. You're not, you know, these guys are artists, these mastering engineers. Their work speaks for themselves. Their work earns them money. When I was hunting for a person to master my album, like I went to Bernie Grunman and Kevin Gray. That was like my, that was, that was, that was the only option for me. Why? Because of their past work. Their legacy is what gets these guys paid. If they're putting out a bunch of turds, nobody's going to hire these guys. That's just the way it is. So from an artist's perspective, why would you punt this? Like, seriously. Universal, again, the largest music holder in the world. You're going to sabotage a product by these people? These are the people that pay you. This would never happen. What Don was, I mean, I've seen many, many interviews. He's very, very, very adamant about getting the best quality product he can out there. Look at the Tone Poets. They were trying to hit a target price with these. The only reason they don't have a $10 bigger price tag because of the jacket, they were hitting a target price point. They wanted to make these records accessible, but they wanted to make them sound good. Think logically, guys. There's no reason why 
they would purposely sabotage their own product. They did all of us a favor to put out the absolute highest quality product sound wise you can get and keep the product low. I mean, and that's just what it is. Let's not tell ourselves any, you know, let's not lie to ourselves that this sounds better because it don't. I mean, and I guess that's just all I have to say about that. You know, it's, and I've kind of stream of conscious rambled on a little bit, but that's what it is. In the beginning, I couldn't fathom a reason why these would sound were, you know, better than the other records. And when I got home, I wanted to believe like I wasn't, you know, I was in the same level of thought as everybody else. I wanted to be able to come on and be like, yep, these are amazing. I wonder what they did. These are fantastic. I think just like everybody else. Everybody else says it. And so do I. It's a lot harder to make these videos and just, you know, get in front of the firing squad because it's contrary to everybody else's opinion. But that's what it is, folks. I'm going to tell it how it is. And these aren't any better than the classic. These classics are a, a gift to the vinyl community. You could tell when a company like Universal, let's look, think about it from this perspective too, and then I'll let you go. How much money do you really think Universal makes by making this record? Let's say they make 20000 of Joe Henderson's Page One. And say all $25 full-blown retail went to them, which is obviously not the case. I make money, the plant makes, everybody's making money. How much money is that? Like, this is a pittance, a pittance of money for a multi-billion dollar conglomerate like Universal. It is such a small amount of money. They did this. I almost think of it as a gift. They wanted to put out a high-quality product that would, be, that would be universally reviewed and revered. And it's kind of almost like, you know, it's the same reason companies like Ford put out the Ford GT or these companies. They don't make money on these cars. It's not, you know, it's not a pickup truck that sells a gazillion. They, they make money on that. They don't make money on certain Halo cars. This is, when it comes to a label, these are kind of like Halo products. These products make money, but they make a small amount of money. These companies make more money from sync licensing, you know, a song and a movie than they'll make from this whole series. And let me tell you, it's a lot less hassle to send a, a file over to a movie studio and say, yep, thank you for your check. Come again. This is effort. I mean, it, it's just they, you can tell they clearly wanted to put out a very high quality product because they wouldn't have gone through the effort. You don't hire Kevin Gray. You don't license the original session photography, which I'm almost positive they did. Otherwise, you wouldn't have had these, you know, more than likely they went back and they licensed, uh, I think, whoever, Ron, you know, they're, I'm not a photography guy. I think whoever owns the original session photography for all these great covers, I would imagine they were licensed or sourced. I mean, you don't go through all that trouble to put out a product that is inferior. If I'm working at Blue Note, I'm gonna be like, you know what? Everybody loves these Music Matters titles. These Music Matters titles are super successful. Obviously, we can do that as the label because we are Blue Note. We own all the master work. Kevin Gray, look, he's down the street. Make me a product that's as good as that. I want it to sound as good as that. And that's what happened. That's just what happened. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise, guys.